What's going on, everybody? RJ Ochoa here from SB Nations, bloggingtheboys.com. Hope all is well wherever you are. We hope you're happy, safe, healthy, and here is your daily update for Thursday, October 7th. It's been a busy last few days for the Dallas Cowboys, never mind the fact that they're back at work prepping for their Week 5 game against the New York Football Giants. On Tuesday night, as you know, they released Jalen Smith. On Wednesday morning, there were some rumors flying around. We had some discussion about it here on the Blog on the Boys YouTube channel. Make sure you do subscribe. Let's start, though, with Jalen Smith because at the time of this recording, it does seem like he may have a new home sooner rather than later. The Green Bay Packers reportedly have interest in Jalen Smith, and there's something to this here. Green Bay Packers head coach Matt LaFleur, who obviously succeeded Mike McCarthy in that post, actually was at Notre Dame on their staff when Jalen Smith was a member of the Fighting Irish. He's talked about this before. We've talked about it at Blogging the Boys. So there is that connection. Generally, that's how stuff like this tends to happen. Jalen, according uh, to really, you know, everyone has taken uh, the release in stride, obviously looking forward to his football career beyond the Cowboys. He reportedly uh, sent a message to Dan Quinn to relay to the rest of the team that he still has their backs. He's still rooting for them. Certainly wishing Jalen the best, hoping everything that comes his way is uh, something that works out for him but uh, to keep things on track when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys this actually doesn't have to do with the Dallas Cowboys but it kind of did for a moment on Wednesday morning it seemed like New England Patriots cornerback Stephon Gilmore was either going to be released or maybe potentially hopefully be traded to the Dallas Cowboys that did not happen but Stephon Gilmore does have a new home and it is against a team that has a silver helmet no it's not the New England Patriots the Carolina Panthers traded for Stephon Gilmore sent a 2023 sixth round draft pick to New England to to acquire his services. Lots of Cowboys fans obviously upset that Stephon Gilmore is not going to be patrolling the secondary opposite of Trayvon Diggs. It sure would have been nice. Uh, the $7 million price tag, $7 million price tag, that is, that he is under for this season is very friendly. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot associated with this. There's a $15 million value that's going to have to be absorbed by the Panthers, and they seemed willing to do it in a way that most teams seemingly were not. So while we all likely would have liked to have seen Stephon Gilmore be a member of the Dallas Cowboys, that is not going to happen. But at the very least, the Cowboys have already played the Panthers this season. Now, something that we already mentioned was Trayvon Diggs and how awesome he is, how great it would have been to have Stefan opposite of him. But Trayvon is awesome in his own right. In fact, Trayvon is so awesome. We talked about a week ago how he was named NFC Defensive Player of the Month. Well, it hasn't been a month since then, but it has been a week, and it was quite the week for Trayvon Diggs. Trayvon named NFC Defensive Player of the Week for his performance against the aforementioned Carolina Panthers. Congratulations to him. Continues to rack up these individual awards. And while they're nice, we all obviously know that the Cowboys, all their players, all their staffers are chasing the ultimate prize, which is a Super Bowl, rings, all that fun stuff. Now, last bit of, uh, you know, kind of around the NFL news before we get to the injury report for the Cowboys on Wednesday. This is, maybe you're going to wonder, what's RJ, what's this got to do with the Dallas Cowboys? I'll tell you. Justin Fields has been named the starting quarterback, the permanent starting quarterback for the Chicago Bears. Matt Nagy finally admitting that he is better than Andy Dalton, our old friend. Uh, and again, what does this have to do with the Cowboys? Why is this important? Why are you being told this information in our daily Cowboys update here in our daily Cowboys news show? Well, it's because the New York Giants, the Cowboys opponent this week, hold the first round pick that belongs to the Chicago Bears in 2022. In fact, Chicago gave it to the Giants to jump up to the 11th overall selection, one pick after the Cowboys jumped out with the Eagles during the draft. Remember all that fun that we had? And so this is important. We obviously want the Giants to have the worst picks possible, meaning that we don't want them to have anything that they can use to make their team good or make their team better, which is difficult because their team is so bad. But we want Justin Fields to have a lot of success because if Justin Fields is having success that means the bears are having success if the bears are having success that means their first round draft pick is further and further and further and further back the bears currently sit at two and two hopefully justin fields leads his team to the playoffs and gives the giants like the 28th pick in the draft that would be awesome so go justin fields go all of you around here have heard my dog bear bark in the background of a lot of our videos so now we have a vested interest in the bears all together i mentioned the injury reports for the cowboys and the giants again that's where the cowboys are playing this sunday at an at&t stadium it is an afternoon kick cowboys injury report for wednesday afternoon uh nothing really surprising dorance armstrong not a practice participant that isn't surprising neither is the fact that donovan wilson didn't practice who you see at the bottom amari cooper not 
not a practice participant with the hamstring issue. Still no need to really worry there. Zeke Elliott did not practice with a knee, but Amari and Zeke both predicted, both, you know, expected to play. So again, do not worry. Randy Gregory, a limited participant, as was Ty Inseki, who's working his way back, along with Carlos Watkins. They are both fit to practice, obviously, in a limited capacity. We should see their work ramp up as the week moves along. And a full level of participation for Trayvon Diggs, who again had the back issue that popped up late in the win over the Carolina Panthers. But what about on the New York side of things? Obviously, we're keeping tabs on what the Giants are doing. Here is their Wednesday practice report. No practice for the following New York Giants. Jabril Peppers, Sterling Shepard, Darius Slayton, Caden Smith, Andrew Thomas, or Leonard Williams. Limited practice on Wednesday for the aforementioned Giants. Not the aforementioned. Get your words right, RJ. Saquon Barkley, Ben Breederson, Nate Ebner, and Kenny Galladay, the wide receiver who they acquired in free agency this offseason. CJ Board was a full participant in Wednesday's practice. We'll obviously keep you updated as things progress along these lines throughout the rest of the week. The Cowboys host the Giants. They're about a seven, seven and a half point favorite, depending on where you look. I think we all feel rather confident that the Cowboys are going to get this win, get to four and one, and head to New England, their last game before the bye in pretty nice and pretty promising position. One last thing that is, you know, not a note or not real any news or anything like that, but something that I think you should know. It's my job to give you the information that I think you should know. Mike McCarthy, during his notes in his press conference on Wednesday, shared that Michael Gallup is probably not going to return next week. He's not going to return this week, obviously. But that means that Michael Gallup, who is eligible to return, if he does not play this week for the Cowboys, which isn't going to happen, if he does not play next week for the Cowboys, which does not seem likely, that means that the next time we see Michael Gallup probably will not be until at least week eight when the Cowboys visit the Minnesota Vikings because they are on bye in week seven. By the way, that game against the Minnesota Vikings is on Halloween night, just to put in perspective how long away that is that should give michael gallup hopefully plenty of time to prepare to get right to rest up for the second half of the season my name is rjo cho you know me of course from blogging the boys all throughout the blogging the boys universe we love you all here at blogging the boys thanks for joining us make sure to subscribe here to the channel check out bloggingtheboys.com check out the blogging the boys podcast network and do me a favor have a great day you know why because you deserve it thanks for joining us everybody see you next time